So I wanted to take a quick minute and just share with you some things that I've been keeping an eye on behind the scenes in reference to the metals sectors. And so typically on a, on a channel, I talk about gold and silver being the primary wealth preservation tools, which they are because gold and silver in and of itself, they are money. But then again, as far as all the current activity happening right now, I'm also keeping my eye on other things worth, you know, trying to speculate in and, you know, not necessarily go all in on, but you know, when it comes to the mining and exploration space, I've been very fortunate to be able to connect with a lot of smart individuals to kind of get a heads up as to what's coming and what they're working on. So I actually came across an opportunity just recently in reference to a base metal, which I haven't really covered much. And so I think so far on the channel, I've covered maybe, I think one or two exploration companies that offer, you know, a, a let me see, access to base metals outside of their primary focus, which is usually, you know, gold or silver, something like that, you know, actual strategic metals. And so as I was actually thumbing through some of the activity in reference to copper, and of course, there's been a lot of talk about copper and we're witnessing, you know, literally, you know, some astronomical prices right now. And on top of gold and silver doing their thing, I was like, okay, why, why not just, you know, dive a little deeper and look at some base metals as well as, you know, share with you guys a possible opportunity, or at least something to put in your radar so that you also can keep your eyes out looking for opportunities for those who, you know, like to speculate as I call it. So real quick, I want to share with you some things here. And I was, as I was doing some research here, it looks like, you know, a metal I haven't touched on might be next in line and well worth, you know, your attention for the most part to try to at least, you know, just pay attention to it and see what it might do in the future. Cause price-wise definitely it's going to move as the world around will continue to go through its fluctuations. So real quick here, I was just going through some charts here and some graphs here. And I was like, okay, just out of curiosity, I was quite, you know, not quite sure exactly what other metals are probably worth diving into. So of course, copper is leading the way when it comes to base metals, then you have lead, iron, nickel, zinc, aluminum, and, and then tin is something I'm not familiar with. So that's why I decided to, you know, dive a little deeper. And as you see here, there's a long list of base metals here that we need for everyday life. All our gadgets, everything we do, whether it be you know from automotive to agriculture or something other on our line, are dependent upon these type of metals here. So it might be worthwhile to do some investigative work and possibly invest in it for those who might be interested. So real quick, I want to just thumb through some articles here, man, and just share with you some things that caught my attention, just because I think it's important to keep your, your, your fillers open and remain open to opportunities out there. So here's an interesting headline that caught my attention in reference to what's happening in copper. And once again, because I follow gold and silver so much, I really don't dive deep into copper, but this is from Financial Times. And it says here, copper price to rocket to 40,000 a ton, says top trader Enderan. It says hedge fund manager shifts focus to red metal after bullish oil bets backfired last year. And so this was literally you know, two days ago. And so once again, if it wasn't for, you know, the idea of TM being brought to my mind, I wouldn't have even thought about looking at this just to get an idea as to what's at play along with copper. And real quick, I just thumb through some things that caught my attention in reference to this article here. So as you can see here, it just talks about a hedge fund manager that's literally hedging his bets on copper because he's anticipating, you know, that as he says, it's a red metal doing quite well. But real quick, it says, Andoran's conviction on the copper market has helped his 1.3 billion commodities discretionary enhanced fund rebound from a 55% loss last year that came as his bullish oil ragers backfired badly. He said the fund is up 83% this year with the gains coming from a broad range of commodities, according to the people familiar with the performance. But yeah, pay attention here. It says copper, a critical metal at the heart of the energy transition has risen almost 20% this year, touching a record at 11,000 a ton this week. But Adoran, one of the world's best known commodity traders, thinks the rally has much farther to run as supply struggles to keep up with demand. So here we have copper touching 11,000 this week. And then this particular guy here believes in the near future is going to be around 40,000 a ton. And so whether that's true or not, I don't know. But for me personally, it's definitely worth paying attention to in my opinion, but it doesn't stop there. And this is where we get to the primary subject for this little short video here. And it has to do with tin, a metal that I've never covered before, but because it falls in line with what copper could experience, I thought it was worth something worth bringing to your attention. So literally this article here is from the Forbes and it came out May 22nd, which is basically last week. So it says, tan matches copper's 38% rise with a blowout possible. And so that title right there, you know, says wonders. But then again, it says here, copper is a hot metal for investors thanks to a 38% price rise over the last 12 months. But there's another industrial metal, tin, which has also risen by 38% with a repeat of past price blowouts possible. It says often overlooked because of its reputation as one of the yesterday commodities, tin is undergoing a revival as a metal critical to a range of technologies, including solder and electronics, solar panels, and a protective barrier for batteries. And so just like copper, because of this technological revolution we're going through right now, there's a high demand for manufacturers to get a hold of a lot of strategic base metals. And of course, copper is leading the way. And based upon this article here, it talks about tin also following suit. And so talking about these two metals here have not been in my repertoire as of late, but it's definitely something I'm keeping an eye on because clearly there's opportunity there as the world race to secure base metals. 
And then it goes on to say here, tin is also the smallest of the base metal family with an annual global production of around 380,000 tons. It says a fracture of copper is 22 million tons. Right there, we have a supply issue right there because clearly there's not enough tin being manufactured to the demand that's underway right now. Then it goes on to say, whereas copper's use is measured in tons, tin is measured in ounces with a little added to an infinite variety of applications, earning it the cookery nickname of the spice element. So it's definitely an interesting name in and of itself right there. And then it says, as well as being produced in relatively small volumes, which can lead to a sudden price spike and a shortage, there are only a handful of major producers, which is China, Myanmar, Indonesia, followed by Bolivia, Peru, and Malaysia. So there we have six countries, which are the major producers for tin at this current moment here, which we talked about in time past, how China definitely is trying to corner the minerals as well as the base metals industries for their own usage. So therefore that can lead to more of a supply crunch in the days ahead on top of what's happening with copper and, and apparently tin is also following suit. So more reason why base metals moving forward, but which today I'm just talking about copper and tin. But if I go back to that list right here of other metals, as you can see here, there's more than enough other metals worth keeping an eye on as well, because as certain countries look to corner the market, a lot of these unknown metals here will become very scarce and important in the days ahead. So for those who might see opportunity, this could be a good time to do some more investigative work to find out if it's something worth diving in deeper to. So just something worth keeping your eyes on. And then here we have another interesting headline here with some very large figures. This is from fastmarkets.com. And this was as of this April 12th. And it says here, 10 price nears 32,000 per ton on demand for technology and renewables. It goes on to say the price of tin on the London Metals Exchange has reached highs in April of 2024, not seen since 2022, with investors betting on the metal having a significant role in the expansion of renewable energy and for technical purposes, supply remains uncertain. So clearly it looks like because of this renewable energy race, tin will definitely be on a lot of people's radar these days. And then the next article here is from Reuters and it says falling stocks and more supply trouble sends tin skywards. And this was a couple of weeks ago as well, but clearly hinting on the upward price trajectory of this base metal at this current moment and definitely in the days ahead. So here we got a little graph here from the London Metal Exchange where it says 10 breaks higher as stocks fall and spreads tighten. And then it says here, speculative buying has played its part in the sharp rally with fund positioning as bullish as it's been since March of 2022 when the price was on a supercharged run to above 50,000 per ton. It says 10 is clearly back in the spotlight as investors buy into the market's bull narrative of resurgent demand and challenge supply. So based upon these three or four articles here, you can clearly see that copper and I'm sure a couple other base metals are definitely going to be making an upward trajectory sooner than later and has a lot to do with the demand yet being limited in supply. And so there lies a possible good opportunity for those who are interested in finding out more about how to get involved in this sector. And the reason I bring all this up here is because I came across a recent mining company that's transitioning into the base metal tin, clearly at the right time. And as always, I like to be able to present the audience with opportunities to look into as well as to speculate for those who have interest. And so basically the company I'm gonna talk about is called Iber American, and they're currently trading in the US over the counter at IBRLF. And they're set to buy one of Europe's largest tin mines called the Panota Project, which is located in Spain for a mere 10 cents on the dollar. And this distressed sale means a massive opportunity as a miner's peak valuation hit 78 million under the previous ownership. But as of right now, it looks like the acquisition Iber American taking over this mine is almost complete and therefore will have Iber American's market cap will be roughly $22 million with this purchase. Even just recently, Rick Rule, who's a former guest on here on RTD, he's also a mining legend, Esther, doing an interview in his Rule Symposium, which he hosts regularly, basically giving it insights on mining and exploration companies. He has some very favorable things to say about TIN, basically just highlighting how it's the forgotten energy transition metal and that with TIN's recent price activity, it would definitely be getting a lot of people's attention sooner than later. So when it comes to Iber American, what's next? There'll be a shareholder vote and the financing are imminent, paving the way for Iber American to resume production and profitability swiftly. This is definitely a first world investment with minimum risk compared to other TIN producing nations that I talked about earlier in this video. So with all this price activity happening right now with, in the base metal sector, and especially in regards to TIN, so if you're curious to find out more, about this particular opportunity here, then take a minute, scroll over to iberamericanlithium.com for more details, or just click the link in the description. It'll take you right there. So that does it for my little quick synopsis on what's happening in the base metal sector. And so clearly the future hedges on base metals in the tech and energy sector, and it's being built out right now. And of course, these metals are going to be crucial to make sure it runs smoothly. So anyway, that's all I wanted just to share with you some things that caught my attention as well as presenting a possible opportunity for those who are interested to speculate. As always, curious to get your feedback. Feel free to leave a comment down below. If you found value in this, hit that thumbs up button. Feel free to share so more people can find out possible opportunities out there beyond the precious metal space. And also let me know if you guys want me to do more of these little short reviews of other base metals or minerals as well as mining and exploration companies as well. But anyway, catch you guys later.